So students, so we are in our concluding lecture and this is the concluding module. So in the previous lecture, we saw computer simulation methods and we discussed molecular dynamics in detail, how you can use the technique in various packages such as NAMD we have seen to predict thermodynamic properties. The last lecture will actually investigate the perturbation method. So one of the method which is perturbation method, it means what we are trying to obtain properties from some reference potential and then we perturb, we add some contribution to find the actual property of that specified potential. So what we will do here is in this lecture, we will try to find out the properties from square well potential using the Barker-Henderson perturbation theory. Perturbation theory for the square well potential. So, we will describing the square well potential as a sum of a reference potential plus a perturbation potential. So, that perturbation potential will be defined using the first order Barker-Henderson perturbation theory. The Barker-Henderson are the name of the scientific persons who have developed this theory. So, we are uh, discussing the first order like that. You can also have second order, third order likewise. Uh, the the calculations becomes much more complex. So, it is all mathematics. So, we are trying to focus on the first order. You can then take it up in the higher orders. So, now in the perturbation theory for the square well potential, the idea is can we write any function which is a function of x and lambda, theta is a function and the function of x and lambda as a function of the variables x and lambda with lambda varies as per the equation below. So, you have theta x lambda equal to the value of that function at lambda equal to 0, then you multiply lambda with the derivative of the particular function with respect to lambda and then again equating the lambda equal to 0. Okay. Then again lambda square by 2 factorial double derivative of that function with respect to lambda square again lambda equal to 0 like this. So, idea is we have to use the Taylor series expansion for the function and expand it around lambda. So, lambda can be 1, lambda can be 2. So, it is so for example, theta x 1 is equal to theta x lambda equal to 0. So, theta x 0 plus lambda in the derivative at lambda equal to 0 x like that will keep on going. So, idea is the entire interacting potential because we have seen we have a lot of problems in calculating the overall potential and then the expression for the thermodynamic properties. Let us say in the case of gases, we are calculating the virial coefficient that is B2, B3, it becomes much more tricky. So, sometimes that is why we are using perturbation potential. What is that? Interaction potential thus is divided into two parts, the reference potential which is lambda equal to 0 plus the perturbing potential. Okay. So, perturbing potential both of them I will write in terms of Taylor series expansion. So, this Taylor series expansion is exactly the way I will write this expression A. So, that is what the entire lecture is focusing on. So, just to make you briefly understand what do we mean by perturbation potential. See the hard sphere potential we know the property. So, this is the hard sphere potential. Okay. So, hard sphere potential you know when R is less than sigma your uh, interaction energy is very, very high. It is almost infinity. So, at this point it is infinity while if you go to the right hand side of R equal to sigma this side it is 0. So, that is what it is written. Now, another potential we know is square well potential. Okay. So, what is square well potential? It is exactly the hard sphere potential. You have a line here infinity, but it extends. Now, a well depth is created. So, the well depth is created. Because of this well depth creation, you have a minus epsilon coming out here. So, it means after this particular value where R is equal to R s w, R s w is a constant into sigma, if you go greater than this value, it will be 0. So, it means this particular square well potential, I can write as a sum of this and a sum of this, is not it? So, if you see these two figures, if you see these two figures, if I add these two up, you will get this square well potential. That is exactly what we will proceed. So, we will write a square well potential in terms of hard sphere potential plus the perturbation potential. In this case, the perturbation potential I will define in this manner. U perturb I will write, U perturb is equal to, it is 0 
when the sigma values are very less. So, if you go to this direction it is 0 or if you go to this direction it is again 0 this part and this part only you will have some value of the potential when you are between sigma and RSW sigma. So, when you are between sigma and RSW sigma then only you will have some value. So, you add this two up you get this that is what the square well potential is all about. So, now if I want to obtain uh, any property of square well potential then instead of solving the square well potential I can write them in terms of a hard square potential plus a perturbation potential that is all the idea is. So, so reference potential thus becomes a sum of is equal to perturbation potential I am sorry this reference potential plus perturbation potential is equal to the interaction potential ok. So, this is the reference potential, reference potential is the hard sphere potential, perturbation potential is this potential where lambda is multiplied by a the interatomic perturbation potential. So, sum total of these two will give the interacting potential. So, hard sphere potential why are we using that we are using as a reference potential because the properties are well known. So, when I write lambda equal to 1 it means the potential is a function of r and lambda equal to 1 which is equal to this will not happen anything in this one. So, lambda is 1 it simply becomes u perturbation ok. Now, if you add this two up just now what I discussed in the previous slide if you add this two up you will get the square wheel potential ok. So, it means you will get this type of diagram this. So, this is what you call perturbation and this is you call so you add these two up you get this potential. So, it means if I put lambda equal to 0 then the second term vanishes so, second term vanishes means you are only left with hard sphere potential. So, you actually go back to the reference potential that is hard sphere potential. So, keeping this in mind let us explore the possibility of obtaining the properties of square wheel potential from the known properties of hard sphere potential ok because we know the properties of hard sphere potential we know what is the virial coefficients of a hard sphere potential. So, that is why it is easier to compute the properties at some other potential. So, what we will do we will use the Taylor series expansion and expand around lambda equal to 0 that is square well potential properties we will obtain from the hard sphere fluids known properties ok. So, we know the second virial coefficient of a hard sphere fluid that is B2Hs we know that if you recollect in the previous modules where we have done the virial equation of state we have already obtained this B2 value of the virial coefficient so, that is known for hard sphere potential. Then we will use perturbation theory and obtain the second virial coefficient the square wheel potential. So, I can write like this the square wheel potential virial coefficient which is nothing but equal to the potential that is the video expression at lambda equal to 1 I will write then only it will be square well potential. So, it will be some value at lambda equal to 0 plus the terms second and third terms resembles the Taylor series expansion. So, what you do you do the derivative of this term then insert lambda equal to 0 do the derivative of this term then insert lambda equal to 0 likewise. So, uh, but this particular B2 that is lambda equal to 0 is nothing but the value of the virial coefficient for a hard sphere fluid that is known that is nothing but 2 pi sigma cube by 3 because if you know B2 lambda 0 is equal to B2 hard sphere this is again the function of temperature is equal to 2 pi sigma. The sigma here is nothing but we can say it is close to the or equal to the molecular diameter ok. So, then the other terms follow. So, just to recapitulate what we have learnt in the previous module that is B2 T lambda is equal to 2 pi so 0 to infinity then this is now the interacting potential earlier I wrote only this minus U R now instead of this this lambda has come into the picture. So, now this lambda along with this interatomic potential is a sum of two terms that is U R the sum of two terms. So, that is u hard sphere term and then lambda into u of perturbation term which is a function of r and lambda 
okay so that's what it is i have actually written this and inserted this and then separated out so uh, it is separated out so i have written a hard sphere term and this term i've just separated this because it's a minus sign here so minus sign will be there on the exponential part so okay so this will be ur potential so obviously this is not lambda it's only a function of r lambda is multiplied with this so now this is the expression so b2 expression is this so now we will try to use this b2 t lambda expression into these expressions this one and this one okay i will insert this particular expression into this so first i will take a derivative okay then i will take the integral so this is a bit uh, so mathematics is involved so i took the last expression and i took the derivative of that expression so it is the derivative of the b2 t lambda by lambda with respect to lambda at constant temperature so 2 pi is a common it's outside then the entire expression is inside okay this ex entire expression is inside now you can see here if you take the derivative of this function one is a constant it goes to zero only those which has a product with lambda will be coming into the prefactored term so you have the u part by kt coming out here this u part by kt coming out here remaining terms will be as it is because they are not function of lambda now kt can be taken outside is a constant now we are left with the u part this particular potential and the term for hard sphere what you do is you apply the limits first then you insert the lambda equal to 0 so what i did is i have applied the limits because it goes from 0 to infinity so if i apply 0 to infinity the function whether it is r is less than sigma or r is greater than sigma either it is infinity or it is 0 so means the hard sphere term this is either infinity or 0 okay so either case if it is infinity it becomes 1 if it is 0 again it becomes 1 but then it is getting multiplied by u perturbation potential and this u perturbation potential is equal to 0 at both these ends 0 and 0 so this both the ends even if it has an infinite value it is then multiplied by 0 so these two particular ends does not have any value of the function so whatever you have is only this minus epsilon so this minus epsilon is just the only value which is remaining and the limits from 0 to infinity thus will become sigma to rsw sigma okay so the, because it is minus it comes minus and the remaining everything goes away so we have this term as minus epsilon r square dr okay so then you can do the integral on this particular definite integral so you will get this expression so this is the expression for the first term of the taylor series expansion in the second term taylor series expansion what you do is you take this term you take this term and then do the derivative again with respect to lambda so again you will have a u this particular term this particular expression i am writing it again here then if you do that again you will have a term of u perturbation multiplied with u perturbation this becomes u perturbation whole square then the remaining terms as it is okay now what you do again you insert 0 to infinity and again you will see that uh, most of the terms actually will be vanishing because they will be equal to 0 so ultimately you will get this value at lambda equal to 0 this lambda equal to 0 then again you have the same limits the limits will be again from sigma to rsw so if you apply limits from sigma to rsw so you will get this expression so this is the expression for the second term of the taylor series so now you substitute all the terms so this is the ref potential equal to reference potential plus the interaction potential contribution that is the term i have taken 2 pi by 3 sigma cube r cube minus 1 as common okay 2 pi sigma cube by r cube minus 1 and here also we have 2 pi sigma cube by r cube minus 1 of common so remaining is this term so this is the second order in taylor series expansion which is equal to lambda equal to 1 for a full square potential okay so this is the expression we finally have obtained now let us dimensionalize this expression and write in terms of without any units 
So if you do that, you just divide the RHS with 2 pi 3 by sigma cube, so you get this expression. Now you can dimensionalize the temperature also, so I have dimensional temperature and written in terms of T star, so T star is KT by epsilon, so this becomes this expression. So this we can tell that is the second order perturbation result. Okay. While if you want to write only the first order perturbation result, so just leave out this term, so you have only the first term that is d lambda, d of that particular uh, b term with respect to lambda, only the first order derivative you have to retain, then it will become only this expression, this is the first order perturbation. But the actual expression which we have obtained in the virial equation module is this expression, okay. If you remember, this was 1 plus 1 minus e to the power of 1 by t f star by r s w whole cube minus 1. So if you plot these values of reduced virial coefficient with respect to re temperature, so you will get this expression. So if you see this is the actual expression, the bold one, so solid line is the actual expression. So dashed line, so dashed line is the second order, this is the second order, okay, this is second order. And uh, the finally, which is one which is outside, it is the first order, okay, dot line, first order. So you see it matches closely with the second order perturbation potential, but it a lot of deviation is seen with the first order deviation. But as you go higher and higher temperature, all of this converges, okay. So that is what it says at higher temperature, it is equal to each other, whether it is first order or second order, at higher temperature, it actually converges, but at lower temperatures, there is lot of deviation with first order as compared to second order. So we have obtained the expression, now we obtain the Helmholtz free function for a fluid, for a dense fluid. So what is that dense fluid? We know this expression, canonical expression, that is Helmholtz function is equal to minus kT ln q. So q I am writing as a part of internal energy mode and a configuration integral that is Z nVt. Okay. So all these term, this particular term are constants, you can take it outside. So when you do a log, you take it outside. So this I have taken it outside, the remaining is only this Z term. And what is Z? Z is this multidimensional integral over the volume, interatomic potential by kT and then this volumes, the small volumes till R1 to Rn. So I can also write this particular square wave potential in the case of dense fluids as a sum of Hartsphere fluid plus lambda into perturbation potential. Again I do the same manner, I will do a Taylor series expansion of the Helmholtz free function as a function of perturbation parameter lambda. So Helmholtz free function at any value of lambda is equal to value at lambda equal to 0 plus lambda into first derivative plus lambda square by 2 factorial into second derivative. Or I can write down the Helmholtz free function at lambda equal to 0 minus because this expression you have this constant term, this term because it is minus, so this minus comes here in both the second and third expression. Okay. So because the complexity of the transition internal part does not depend on the interaction potential, so they can be taken outside. So now let us write the expression for ln z by lambda. So this is a bit mathematics involved, so what we will do is uh, what we have read, we have to use all our concepts earlier, that is consider the interatomic potential of n atoms and also a function of lambda as this value. It is a summation of, double summation of ij, i and j are the pairs of molecule. So ij lambda, which is, I can write down as a sum of a hard sphere potential plus a perturbation potential multiplied by lambda. This is very important because this particular expression of interatomic potential you will be inserting in the derivative function. So now you do the derivative dou ln z by because we are you need dou z by dou lambda. What I can do? I can take 1 by z into dou z by dou lambda. So 1 by z is already there, then dou z by dou lambda. Now this is the u, this is the lambda. What I did was I wrote u as a sum of heart sphere plus the perturbation, that is it, I have done nothing else, okay. Now what I did was the second part, I took the derivative, 
again the same thing only lambda is associated with the second term. So, this perturbation comes into the, the prefactor, then other terms remains the same. Okay. Now, you write lambda equal to 0 because now you have done the entire derivation. If you put lambda equal to 0, the second term goes away and you have only u perturbation into that exponential term having only hard sphere because if you put lambda equal to 0 here, this term goes away. So, you have this expression by z. This, this z was already there. So, now uh, what you do is you have a integral and then you have a summation. So, the term here if I, I have written here is due to the integral contribution of the identical molecules because when you are doing this integration you will have identical pairs. So, we can replace the summation with n into n minus 1 by 2. So, I have taken out this n into n minus 1 by 2 outside then inside you have only have remaining what I will do I will write in terms of 1, 2. So, I will write in terms of pairwise potential. So, I am writing in terms of R12. So, this will be on R12. So, now something I want to do is I want to relate this entire term with respect to pairwise distribution. So, you have to look this expression. See this expression I have to have V square. I do not have V square here. So, what I will do I will multiply and divide by V square in this expression. Okay? So, that I the remaining terms are already there it is simply equal to u per you have a u perturbation extra otherwise everything is there. So, you do v square and v square you divide and multiply. So, that is why you have a v square here and that v square is subsumed in the description of this pairwise distribution I am written g hard square this term okay, this term and then u perturbation is as it is R12. Now, what I will do is I will fix the coordinate of 1 so that 2 can vary. So, I have fixed the coordinate of 1 and 2 so that dr1 comes out of this integral the elemental volume r1. So, if this comes out of the integral, so this is v. So, this v and this v cancels out one of the v. So, it becomes 2v. So, what you are left inside this is a single integral u perturbation r12 then the pairwise distribution function and finally, a uh, elemental volume which has 1, 2. Okay? Then what I do, I do some minor adjustment that is uh, see I go from here to the Cartesian coordinates r square dr. So, obviously, 2 pi will come outside because uh, this dr 1, 2 is equal to this is equal to 4 pi r square dr. So, because of this, this 2 pi comes out because you have 4 pi here. So, 2 is here. So, 2 and 4 pi get cancelled out and becomes 2 pi here. So, what you are left inside the bracket is simply from 0 to infinity the perturbation potential multiplied with the pairwise distribution r square and dr. Or another thing what you can do is n by v you can write as rho. Okay, n by v is equal to n minus n by v is equal to rho. So, n will be as it is and n minus v equal to rho. So, it will be 2 pi rho n by k t and then you multiply u perturbation into the pairwise distribution r square t r. Okay? So, this is your expression for Helmholtz free function. Okay? So, this is the way you have derived. See, I have not touched upon the second derivative, second order because second order means you have to do for the second term the differential. So, it is much more complex. I have asked you and I have tried to make you understand the first order. This is the first derivative only. So, this is the first order. If I write second order means I have to take the second expression, the double derivative. So, this is then the Helmholtz free function of lambda equal to something at lambda equal to 0 plus lambda into the previous term. So, lambda into ur. So, this is the ur term I have written. Okay? Or I can put a lambda equal to lambda 0 and it is do some uh, kt, kt i cancels out from here, kt, kt and kt all cancels out and I insert lambda equal to 1. So, if I insert lambda equal to 1, this will be simply 2 pi rho n and then the remaining expression. So, Helmholtz free function for a square wave potential is nothing but the hard square potential minus this value because if I put lambda equal to 1, it will be square wave potential. If I put lambda equal to 0, it will be a hard sphere potential. Okay? That is what the idea is. Once I get this A value, then I can obtain the pressure value. What is pressure? 
it is the derivative of the Helmholtz free function with respect to volume. So, it is nothing but uh, the density square by n by dou a by dou uh, this uh, density rho, dou a by dou a. Now, same way I can also define and I can calculate the pressure due to square wave potential is nothing but the sum of Hertzsphere potential and the contribution due to the interactive potential, the perturbation potential. So, this is the perturbation potential, okay. So, then uh, if you do the same thing and do the derivative of this function, you will have this expression, first expression, second expression, two expressions. So, all this can, these above expressions can be termed as mean field approximation. What does this mean field expression means? So, it means whatever RDF I have written that is GHS, it is unchanged from that in the reference potential, okay. So, whatever Hertzsphere potential, pairwise potential I have obtained in the previous module, I am using the exactly the same expression. I am not changed. The potential reference, this particular pairwise potential is not changed. It is just simply Hertzsphere potential which is easy to calculate. So, I am expressing any thermodynamic property in terms of the reference potential. That is what the idea is. That is called mean field approximation. It means the perturbation contribution is the average of the perturbation contribution potential over the structure of the reference fluid. So, it is the average. So, that is what this means actually. It is the average of the RDF. So, it is the average of the perturbation potential over the structure RDF of the reference fluid, okay. Because here you have this potential, the perturbation potential inside the integral. That is why it is called as mean field approximation. So, like this we can also use it for other interacting potential. We have done in this today's lecture for the square wheel potential. Now, it can be generalized to any other potential. Then for any other potential, you can simply write it as the sum of Hertzsphere potential as a reference potential plus a perturbation potential of any form. Now, this form may differ based upon your choice of your system or what you want to study. So, it will be the Helmholtz free function then will be given as Helmholtz free function plus this expression we have obtained for Hertzsphere. So, something like this will be coming in terms of your own perturbation potential. So, your form of this perturbation potential will change. If this changes, so we do will your pressure, pressure is again a addition of the Hertzsphere potential pressure plus the term which actually averages out the perturbation potential with respect to the radial distribution function, okay. So, like this you can calculate pressure and again from pressure, energy and other terms. So, this actually comes to the end of this perturbation theory and it also comes to the end of our uh, module, this lecture and also the course. So, I hope you have understood this final module, the computer simulation method and the, this perturbation theory and also the previous modules. So, I suggest uh, this you should go through this Sandler's book for a thorough description of the derivation in detail and also uh, try to make it use in your calculation. Like if you want to calculate a certain thermodynamic property, you should be able to know what I have done in classical and how it differs when you do it in statistical. That is my idea for this course is to obtain properties from statistical manner, that is from statistical interpretation of data. So, I hope uh, this has been an, an enriching experience to you all and uh, you will apply this in your future courses or in your future projects. Thank you and all the best. Thank you.